everybody, it's Patty Ann here. Hang on, I got some more fresh coffee. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to show you something today. Um, the same flower that I had used before, I decided to cut it out and rather than this being vinyl, I wanted to use it as a stencil. So I was trying to cut it out of transparency film. I think I got this at a yard sale or something because it says a dollar on it. So I really don't remember. But you probably remember transparencies from when you were in school. We didn't have them when I was in school. Uh, we just had the plain old chalkboard. But um, when I was a teacher, I used transparencies on an overhead projector. So that's what this stuff is. It's just that film. So what I did with that flower was I just, it, it's not a print and cut. It's simply a cut. And what I did was I got that image. And you can go back to yesterday's video. And instead of just... Um, highlighting around the edges of the flower to make it transparent. I also made inside of each one of these places transparent. So, and then I made it a cut file. So what happened was this part was cut out. All of the insides were cut out as well as the outside, leaving me with just the black lines. Now, I could do this with vinyl and it would be perfect. It would be a very nice vinyl piece. But like I said, I just wanted to try it out of a transparency because I have a slew of them. So here's what I did. I took a piece of watercolor paper and I put this on top of it. And then I, oh, let me tell you something about using a transparency. I forgot to say this. I had a hard time getting my transparency to stick to my mat, even though I cleaned my mat off and it was very sticky. The transparency would keep shifting. So I used this stuff on the back of the transparency, the part that was going to go down on my mat. This is called Sulky KK2000. It's a, a temporary adhesive spray. I'll tell you what, it's not cheap. I got this at my local quilt shop, and it cost $15.99. I bet you can find a smaller bottle of it and maybe find it more, more inexpensively online. But anyway or another temporary adhesive. I just happen to have this one because I'm also a quilter. So I sprayed this on the back and then I put it down and then I did the cut. So now I'm to this point, I've cut it out. And what I'm using is by recollections, which I got at Michael's, yes, because Hobby Lobby was sold out of them. This is the embossing pad. So what I did was I just went all around here inside of the flower and some outside just putting this embossing pad I just rotated it which I try not to do but it really won't matter too much I hope so I'm just doing this embossing uh, pad okay and then put the lid on it then I'm going to take this card move this little guy over and put the card in this little tray that I also got at Hobby Lobby. Now, you know, you don't need anything fancy like this. You can, my friend and I, Rose, we used to just do this on a um, piece of cardboard or uh, not cardboard, a piece of paper, because then you could make it into a little cone shape and put the excess back in your little tiny uh, embossing powder thing. So you'll be able to see See how that's sticking to that? And if I want to, I could take a, br try, a dry brush. I have one that I want to use for this, which I really don't. So I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to leave this bit on here. So that's it. The next thing that I have to do is to emboss it. Now, as I said, Rose and I didn't have this container. And we also didn't have an embossing gun, a heat gun back in the day. We couldn't afford all that jazz, you know, when we were new moms. So what we used was a light bulb. Imagine this is the light bulb here, and we would just take this. The light was obviously lit, the heat, and go like this. Get it very close to the light bulb. Obviously, don't burn it. And it would work. But now these heat guns that they have, they're not too expensive. And they work pretty well. So I'm just going to do a little bit of this, and then I'll meet you back here. But what I do want you to notice while I'm doing this, 
let me put this down here to heat it up, is that as, as I go over this, you'll see it getting dark where it's melting, where the embossing powder is melting. Okay, you can probably see that center getting darker. really hot. Like burn your fingers hot. That's just about done. You do have to be careful to make sure that you do get it all done because otherwise some of these little pieces of grainy stuff will get in your paints and your paintbrush and I, I don't want that to happen. Let me get rid of this piece of wax paper. Oops. That's getting really a mess. Okay, let's see. Hmm. I think I might make it go like this because I can put a little saying down here then. So I'm going to get my paintbrush and I think, like I say, I'll, I'm going to do this. Which way did I say I was going to go? This way? No, this way. Oh, I kind of like that way actually. I kind of like it like this. With this being the bottom. I don't know. Yes, I like that better. Alright, so I'm going to start with Put some green. Let's see, move this down so you can see what I'm doing. I'm putting some green up here. And so, so I'm using a set that has oh how many colors? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen colors. But really, those little sets that you can get with eight colors, the little cheap ones that you can get at the dollar store, I bet those would work just as well as this. So I'm kind of mixing this some several colors together. looking pretty good. Let's see. I think I'll, I'll just go with that. So I'm going to clean out my brush. My water over here is getting awfully dirty, but I think it'll be alright. Oh, the first thing I want to do is I just want to wet my paper with my clean water. Okay, Because that helps it all to kind of mix together. Okay, I think I'll start with the blue at the top. I'm going to make this be the top. You see how that just, I love watercolors. I really do. I don't know, something about them. I just love how they blend together. I think I'll put some of this green, the lighter green. Okay, that might be too much. And then down here at the bottom, kind of this orangey browny green. That an earthy color green. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. Okay, let's see. Do I want one little pop of color? Yeah, maybe I'm going to try to put one little pop of some yellow. Um, my yellow is a little muddied. I think i just do a little yellow up here. Put a little water so it'll blend. Okay, so that's what it looks like. You can see it. And then again, as I said, I'm going to put a little sentiment down here. So let me move this out of the way, my paints, and let me get my drying gun back out. But you know, I wish, there we go. I'm going to sop up just a little bit of this liquidy here with a paper towel. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to leave this little spot of white here because I kind of like it. Use this gun again just to help dry it a little faster.
All right, it's not totally dry, but just so you get the idea, uh, let's see. I think I've told you before about these little sentiments that I like to make, and I probably would put this on a piece of another piece of cardstock or something under there, or maybe that's happy birthday. There's a smaller happy birthday that might look better. I probably would mount this on black or maybe pick up one of the colors in here before I mount it. And then I'd put the whole mess <laughs> onto a um, maybe a black card. I don't know. Or maybe a white card. I'm not sure. But anyway, I just thought this was another way that we can use our Cricut machines. Use them to cut out stencils. As I said, you can do it out of vinyl. I did mine out of uh, the, um, what do you call it? Transparency. And then I was wondering, I wonder if you could make it out of freezer paper. You know, they wouldn't last very long. You could probably just use it once. Maybe I'll try freezer paper and see how that works. Okay, I wanted to take a moment just to show you how it turned out. And now for the reveal. I think it turned out really pretty. I like it a lot. So for the sentiment, all I did was one of the ones I had printed out, and I was going to mount it on black, but I guess I got lazy. And so I just used my marker, the thick marker, and went around the edges just to give it a little bit of a black border. And then I thought it needed a little something yet again, so I made some little dots on it. But I really like how, this, how these colors kind of go together. I always like to mount it first with one piece of cardstock to frame it in and then I like to use another color with it as well. So I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. It was a lot of fun. Another use for these, as I said, you could cut it out of vinyl or you can cut it out of a transparency. Thanks again for joining me. See you soon. Bye.